I've been playing Atelier Sophie 2 for 15 hours and to say I'm obsessed is a complete understatement. I'm still nowhere near done, but I'm at a point where I know what this game has to offer. Hello you gorgeous human being of the world, it's Miss Bubbles and today I'm sharing with you 5 key features that you need to know about Atelier Sophie 2 to decide if this game is the one for you. Thank you Koutekmo Europe for kindly sharing a game code with us. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's start by addressing the elephant in the room, do you need to know about the previous game? Well, this one starts with the option of watching a story recap, which was about 4 minutes long, and as someone who has not played the first game, I found it good enough to put me on track and to understand who Sophie and Plakta are, the main focal characters of this title. I won't talk about the recap much in case you want to go back to the older game and play, but I will say that I got the gist of what was happening previously and that was enough for me. Moving forward to the story presented in this game, the developers do not waste much time they quickly introduce us to Sophie and Plakta taking a walk to a certain tree and surprisingly a portal appears and it takes Plakta away and Sophie jumps in right after her. Soon enough you find out that you are in a land of dreams and Plakta is nowhere to be found. Then you quickly stumble upon some remarkable characters who are all willing to help you discover how you got to their world, where your friend is, and how to reach your ultimate desire and thus being able to leave this place. In addition you also get to meet your grandmother who is the inspiration behind Sophie's dream of becoming a licensed alchemist. I'm intentionally being so vague here because I don't want to give away any spoilers, really anything that I can say can be considered as a spoiler for you, so I really welcome you to try this story for yourself. Plot twists happen so quickly and you are always learning something new and surprising and it just feels like this amazing story where you're eager to see what happens next. Now let's jump to the heart and soul of this game which is all about synthesis as well as the battle system. Starting with the synthesis mechanic, you will instantly simply unlock an atelier where all the magic happens. In there you can sleep to progress time, change your characters, clothes, you can store ingredients that you find around the world, and most importantly you can synthesize new recipes. Also in the atelier this is where you have the chance to manually save your game. So remember if you want to save your game always go back to the atelier, head over to your desk and save manually. In regards to synthesis, as you gather ingredients around the world, you will unlock new recipes to create and you do so by using the cauldron in the atelier and going into a panel screen, let's say, where you mix and match different ingredients. This is for you to establish the elemental effect of them and to try and aim at increasing the quality of the item every time you try. Elements range from fire, ice, lightning, wind and light and these are important to manage when you are in combat, especially when you're trying to fight hard bosses so keep an eye on the elements kind of thing that's going on in this game. Now if this feels a little bit too complicated for you you can just choose the items that you want to use and then you can let the game figure things out and place everything automatically for you with the click of a button. This of course will not be as efficient as you personally placing the items but I still got high quality ingredients even by doing so and you can also synthesize gathering tools as well to get more materials by playing mini games when you're around the world, you can get yourself some good armor, special rings, talisman, and more. This also ties to the fact that there are some things that can be synthesized by Sophie while others can be synthesized by Plakta, which is an alternative Plakta here. I don't know yet. I, as I said, I didn't finish the game, so I don't know what the heck is happening in this game, but you have an alternative Plakta that is also available to synthesize specific items, so every one of them can synthesize something that is special to them. Another important thing here is the ability to synthesize elements that let you control the weather and these have a certain amount of uses to them so you need to make sure that you always have enough on hand so make sure you are well equipped before you go on an adventure. And I will say this, do synthesize everything that you unlock be it from Sophie or from Plakta. This is very important for you to get better gear, to unlock more recipes which is the whole thing that is going on in this game. It's all about these recipes, it's all about making your characters get stronger so make sure that you're synthesizing everything. And of course you have an alchemy level so the better you get at it the better
better the gear that you can unlock. And finally, the last thing that you need to remember is to equip your gathering tools as well as everything that you synthesize as consumables. If you don't do that, you're not able to use your tools in the world. Let's move on to the next important thing, which is the battle system. And this is a turn-based JRPG. Now, if you're like me and you're new into the turn-based genre, or if you're experienced, this game is perfect because it lets you choose what kind of difficulty level you want to go for and then you can cater the experience to your level of experience. You can choose to go with easy, normal, hard, very hard and then legendary when you finish the game and I was surprised that I was playing on normal and was okay with the difficulty. I, I don't know who this girl is but hey, I play on normal now, okay? Moving on to the battle system itself, it has a few mechanics to learn, but you'll adjust to them quickly and start to find them rather entertaining. So when you're venturing in the world, you will see a monster and when you go and hit that monster, I really recommend that you hit that monster, don't let them hit you first. You will go into this battle screen and there's no loading screens whatsoever between them. And I think this is excellent for not breaking immersion. Once you're in battle, you have three characters at the front and three others that are there for support. You can choose to simply attack, use a skill by resorting to MP, blocking, using an item that you synthesize like bombs or healing elixirs, or simply fleeing. To be more strategic, you can also see who the enemy will target next and that will let you be responsible of what kind of attack you want to initiate. In addition to that, you can swap characters in a battle to engage a block or resort to twin action where two characters can use their skills to attack an enemy at the same time, dealing insane damage to them. Of course, all items and skills use play off elemental damage and you can even change the weather to turn battles in your favor and use the enemy's weaknesses and if you feel like the battle is being a little bit slow you can adjust the battle speed and i really use that quite a lot because i was just sometimes grinding for no reason you don't really need to grind in this game but i was doing that and i think speeding up the battle speed what you get my point, was very important for me to just rush through things when I needed to. And the more you win, the more you level up, thus increasing things like your attack damage, mana points, HP, and more. Both synthesis and battles have more intricate details into them. However, if all you have heard already sounds interesting enough, and trust me, in practice, it's all very fulfilling, you will engage in more details and explore additional mechanics. One last thing that you need to know is that you will eventually unlock ability points, and these can can be used to increase the stats of yourself as Sophie and the other party members. These can be acquired by completing different side quests for, you know, developing your friendship with your other members as you embark on your journey, but remember to use them because I found myself forgetting them quite often. And always remember to return to the atelier to put your gathered ingredients in storage and refill automatically everyone's MP and HP at no extra cost. Another majestic part of this game, yes I'm gonna say majestic, is the world itself, the exploration and the ambience altogether. Let's start with the world itself, which is beautiful, gorgeous, and just simply magnificent. If we were to just address the lush environment, colors, and overall beauty, Atelier Sophie 2 ticks all the boxes. You can even go into photo mode and enjoy the scenery even more. With the day and night progression, sunsets were particularly enjoyable to stare at, and mix that with the joyful music here, engaging sound effects, it's just a well-balanced recipe to be enjoyed. Now the world is pretty big and it's divided into different areas. As you unlock portals, you can traverse from area to area, which is important because of two things. One, you need to traverse so you can progress your story, but two, you find new monsters and ingredients to fulfill your synthesis recipes. These recipes are important because you can use them to complete NPC quests and gain a better reputation for yourself, and also, of course, to use them in battle. Besides a world map and a big map for the area you are in in itself, you also have a mini map which can be transferred to the middle, and this is very crucial. Do you remember when I told you that you can play with the weather? Well, this is very important also for you to traverse around the world because there are different obstacles and by playing with the different weather elements, you can play around with the world and go from area to area. Now, these obstacles can be addressed, as I said, but this all falls into kind of a puzzle element 
elements here and you need to try to figure out how to play with the weather and move on and it can get a little bit frustrating but once you understand the map and you know how to use it while also using the weather to your advantage you'll naturally get familiar with what you need to do apart from that the city areas are beautiful you have different shops to buy items from and restock them when necessary different npcs to talk to and they might even give you some ingredients for free it is just a wonderful beautiful majestic world and i honestly can't wait to just put out this review kind of and let you guys know what i think about it and i just want to go back and play now i played atelier sophie 2 on my nintendo switch and let me say the experience there it's amazing the game offers you the possibility to choose between performance and quality modes and I really think that all of the games on the Nintendo Switch need to implement this because if you're like me, I'm always switching between docked and handheld mode. So being able to switch between the performance or quality mode that I want to go for me is very important, especially if you suffer from a motion sickness like I do. So basically, I used performance mode when I played in handheld to minimize any instance of motion sickness and then I went with quality mode when I was playing in dog. The loading screens were fast, the graphics looked beautiful, the battles were quick and smooth, and it was a great experience. I had a small problem with some recipes photos being glitched out, but this was fixed in the newest patch, so you don't have to worry about that. Otherwise, I had no bugs, no problems, no nothing. Really, this even ran better than Blue Reflection Second Light in handheld mode on the Nintendo Switch. Like, really, the performance is top-notch. Now, let's decide who this game is for. We're gonna go by this game is for you if, it's not for you if and then my personal verdict this game is for you if of course you love the atelier series along with turn-based battles where you are in charge of the combat playground it is also for you if you like to pay attention to small details you like to explore a beautiful semi-open world and get an overall well-packaged jrpg it is also for you if you're new to jrpgs especially ones with turn-based battles due to the opportunity to play around with difficulty levels anytime you want this game is however not for you if you hate or are very impatient with trying to figure out a certain map, how to traverse from world to world or from area to area, you don't like to engage in anything that is close to being a puzzle, it's not for you if you get easily overwhelmed with mechanics, which should not really be the case here, but hey, we all play differently, so I'm here to let you know, and it's not for you if you're expecting a completely open world with NPCs that have their own unique stories, plenty of distinct side quests and stuff like that. As to my own personal opinion i really adored atelier sophie too i'm telling you i can't wait to go back to playing it right now i have been on a really amazing journey as i started my youtube channel last year and sophie too did not disappoint it overly delivered beyond my expectations. From the accessibility that it gave me, the beautiful story, the amazing friendships that I got to see develop before my eyes, the lush environment, the mesmerizing music, it was just all amazing. And hey, if you enjoyed Sophie too, I'm pretty sure you're gonna also enjoy another video that I covered about Blue Reflection Second Light, so make sure to check that out. Let me know if you're gonna buy Sophie too down in the comment section or tell me about your experience with the previous one. Thank you to my Patreons for making videos like this possible and a beautiful shout out to Justin and Faye. As always, stay bubbly, stay positive, and I will see your gorgeous self in the next one. Bye!